So in this video I'll teach how to fire functions by using events. So first I'm going to make a part. And then I'll go ahead and put a script in server script service. It's actually makes it part a little flat. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is make it to where whenever a character uh, touches this part, it fires some function that will activate some code. So in order to do that, first we need to specify what object we're dealing with. So I'm messing with this part right here. So let's go ahead and make a variable to reference this part. So game.workspace.part. Storing the reference to this variable right here. And I'll go ahead and make a function. All right, a function that can be whatever you want. So I'm just going to call it on touch. Then I'm just going to print I've been touched just for testing. So now in the last video, I told you you can call the function like this and it'll run whenever you call said function. But in this case, we want to essentially activate this function when a trigger happens, the trigger being something touching the part. So to do that, we're going to go to the API documentation again, and we're going to search up the object we're dealing with. In this case, it is the part. So I'm just going to type in part, make sure you go to engine API, and then click that. All right, and then we'll go ahead and scroll down until we reach something called events right here. So we'll go ahead and click on that, and we can open this up. So you can see there's a lot of them here, and I usually just look on the right side because it's more condensed. So there's a bunch of events we can use. Uh, so the one I want is called touch. If you don't know what event you need, you can go, you can just read the description of each one of them and just choose whatever you think is correct. In this case though, I will be using the touch event. And there's some description right here. And a, I think a code example, a code example right here. So, we keep a very good uh, place to learn how to code. So in order to connect uh, this event to the function, We'll type in first the object, so in this case it will be the part. And then we type in the event name, so in this case it will be touch. And you can see uh, anything with a lightning symbol like this, touch, touch end, or whatever other stuff, that, that usually means it's an event. So we'll just do that. And then we'll have to connect the touch event to this function, so we're going to type in colon, connect, and then the function name. So let's just call it on touch for me. Now if we were to test this out. I go to walk on it and see it prints I've been touch. So that accomplishes that objective. Uh, something to note is that some events also give uh, parameters. If you don't know what a parameter is, check out my last video. But if you read right here, it says in the parameters list, each event will have one. You can see it says it gives us something called other part. And it's just the part I came in contact with the given part. So what that means is, so let's go ahead and make our parameter and we'll just call it the same thing. It doesn't have to be necessarily called the same thing, but for consistency, I will do that. And then we can go ahead and print the part and see what that parameter is. So now if I walk on it, you can see it just prints what is actually t detecting the touch on the platform. So in this case, it's just my foot or leg. So that's kind of just like the basics of how to set up an event. So I'll give you a couple more examples on how to set up more. Let's say you're dealing with an unfamiliar event. Let's say we're dealing with child added right here, okay? Not a very common one that people use. So we'll go ahead and read the description. Fires after an object is parented to this instance. So what that means is if I ever have, let's say a part like this and I drag it into this little main part, then it will fire that event. So we can go ahead and test that. So same process, all you gotta do is instead of that touch, we're just gonna write down child added. And then we'll look at what parameters it gives. So in this case, it gives us the child that's been parented. So I'm just gonna call it child. And I'm just gonna print the child. Added and then child. So now if you run it, you can see no print happens because we haven't parented anything to it. So let's go ahead and make a, another object. And we'll call it this uh, ball or hot dog. So now if we were to drag this in here, you can see it printed added hot dog. And we can do it again multiple times and it'll uh, run that function multiple times because it is a trigger. So I'll give one more example. This time not dealing with parts, let's choose a random thing that I never really worked with. Let's try lighting, see what happens, see what's up with that. 
So again, go to the object we want to deal with. So in this case, it'll be lighting. I'll click on Edge and API. And it's this first one right here. I'm going to scroll to events right here and see what it has. So that looks interesting. Let's we'll see what this does. So the event fires when a property of the lighting is changed or a sky is added. Okay, let's try the sky method. So I'm going to go get a sky real quick because I don't have one on me. So I guess in this case we'll use that. So let's go ahead and make a script again. So we're going to make a function, call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it change and then specify the object you're dealing with. So for me, it's game lighting, and then the event name. So that's lighting change. So we can just copy and paste that, connect it to the function. And then we can go ahead and print a lighting change and let's see if there's any parameters. So let's see, it looks like it gives us a parameters called sky change and it's a boolean type. So we can go ahead and write that down, sky changed. And I'll go ahead and print that. So I never used this event before, so this is completely new to me. So let's see if, if my intuition is right. So I'll go ahead and play it and then I will parent the new sky to the lighting. And you can see it worked perfectly. It, it prints lighting change and it prints true to indicate that the sky has been changed. So we're to get that back. You can see it print again because we removed it. Let's try changing like something like an ambient. And you can see it also prints, but this time it's false because the sky didn't change because we're just changing the ambient. So that's usually how uh, you connect events and stuff. Uh, there's another way to connect events. So this is a connecting, let's go back to the part example actually. So give me a minute to write that. So we got part, in the workspace, a part, the function, on touch, again it's just a name, so get it whatever you want. And then I'll go ahead and connect. Okay. So the way this is connecting is we give it a function based on the name of the function. However, there's something called a anonymous function. So in this an anonymous function is, let's get rid of that. We type in the function. And essentially what we're doing is we're making a function inside the connection instead of making it outside. And the purpose of this is so we don't have to name the function. So we can go ahead and test this. I've attached. I'll give it the hit parameter. Our other part parameter actually. I think that's a better name. And then we'll go ahead and test it. So now we test it. You can see it still works the same. The difference is that we are using something called an anonymous function, which is just a function with no name. And there's not really too much difference between the two. Just use whatever one you're most comfortable with. Uh, personally, I like using this a lot because I don't have to think about a name. And when you're messing with a lot of event connections, it gets kind of tedious naming so many functions. And that's the end of the video. Uh, I know. It may seem a little bit too simple, but it really is uh, just the same process for any event. Just think of it as if you want a function to activate whenever X happens, then you use an event and you just have to find what event that would help you with that. Uh, so yeah, if you liked the video, feel free to give it a like, subscribe, join my Discord, and if you have any other tutorial suggestions, comment down below. And we are actually almost done with the tutorial basic series. Only a couple more left to go, so keep on going.